Hello and welcome to MoCap TV. In this episode, we welcome new staff members to Missouri Wing, Cape Girardeau cadets test their skills at first aid, and cadets from across the wing participate in another aerospace academy. These stories and more, MoCap TV starts now. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Lieutenant Colonel Brad Sanker. It's been a while since we had our last episode, and to be honest, the start of 2014 has already been a really quiet year. This year started out with blankets of snow across much of the state, and even though spring keeps trying to make an appearance, we are not done with winter yet. For many, this snow has put a hold on training activities and squadron outings. But that doesn't mean they're not prepared for winter survival. Members from Group 1 ventured into the outdoors late last fall in hopes of learning a few survival skills. While their adventures didn't bring sub-zero temperatures, they certainly got a taste of what it means to rough it. Here is more on that story. Alright sir, we're out here at the uh, Group 1 FTX bivouac and uh, we're conducting a variety of training. Can you kind of tell us what all is going on this weekend? Well here at the Group 1 um bivouac this weekend uh, we are and we've opened it to the wing ultimately we're doing uh, search and rescue training basic and advanced ground team training uh, we have folks uh, experiencing uh, cold weather survival training uh, we're showing them how to do compass courses litter carries uh, and the various other uh, items on the squatters pertaining to uh, uh, ground team we also have some folks training as ground branch directors com and essentially the whole nine yards Brings you to this side of the state for uh, for this event. We came over in July for a fantastic experience doing uh, ground team training and search and rescue exercise training at a mission base over at Green Valley Airport. Kind of helped celebrate the new squadron over there in July. Uh, once and it was a fantastic experience. When we saw this one on the docket again, we couldn't wait to come over again. So we wanted to come over here and be a part of Group One's activities because you guys do it pretty well. How many of the bivouacs have you uh, been to? Two, sir. Two. Sir. So this is your second one. What would you uh, say that you're uh, enjoying the most about today? Um, a couple of the cadets and I worked together to make a nice large improvised shelter uh, to share to keep extra warmth. And this training is important because of uh, what reason? Well, uh, we feel it's important for Missouri Wing to uh, be at the top uh, of, of, the tr of the training because you know ultimately we have missions that pop up on a regular basis pertaining to natural disasters. Um, opportunities for uh, uh, both aerial and uh, ground uh, reconnaissance and photography. Um, we've had situations in Moore, Oklahoma where the wing has been called up, situations such as Joplin where we had the tornado. So what we're trying to do is make sure that we're uh, staying at the top of our readiness for those kinds of activities. And for the new cadets that are out here, what is one goal that you would like to see them come away with from this uh, training opportunity? Well, I think that uh, for new cadets, this is an outstanding opportunity to see what Civil Air Patrol Emergency Services is all about. The group will hold their spring FTX on March 28th through March 30th. Contact Captain Alan Altus for more information. Members from the Trail of Tears Composite Squadron and the Boot Heel Composite Squadron recently completed a Wilderness First Aid course hosted by the Trail of Tears Squadron in Cape Girardeau. The class consisted of 16 hours of instruction guided over two days, where the participants learned about emergency medical care for wounds, fractures, sprains, and strains under circumstances where the victim is more than one hour from definitive medical care. Training was provided by instructors at the Cape Girardeau Career and Technology Center. In addition, they brought a fully equipped ambulance which the CTC uses to train their EMTs and paramedic students. The cadets got a full tour of the ambulance, which proved very popular. I would like to welcome the newest staff members to the Missouri Wing Team, Major Bill DeMarsico and Lieutenant Colonel Bill Sander. Major DeMarsico is joining the cadet program's team as the Wing Drug Demand Reduction Administrator. He brings years of experience to the team. Lieutenant Colonel Sander takes on the role of Director of Aerospace Education. He is the mastermind behind the highly successful aerospace STEM academies held over the last several months. 
Lieutenant Colonel Sander joins us now via Google Hangouts to talk about the recent Aerospace STEM Academy, as well as what you can expect from aerospace this coming year. Welcome to the show, and congratulations on your new role as the Director of Aerospace. Thank you. You've already been filling the mission for a little while now as the Project Officer for Model Rocketry Symposium and now the Aerospace STEM Academies. So let's start off with those events. Can you tell us a little bit about what the Aerospace STEM Academies are all about? Well, it, it all started with a STEM kit and a dream. Um, I received a Model Rocketry STEM kit and I plan to use it this as a one-time Group 3 event to do a Model Rocketry Symposium as I used to do in the past. And when I was talking about it with my Group 3 staff at another event, Lieutenant Colonel O'Neill from Fort Linwood Composite Squadron overheard us and said, hey, I have barracks at Fort Linwood that same weekend. Why don't we do it there and invite more people? And so we're like, sure. And that's sort of how we got started. So after the first Rock Tree Symposium in August, with, when we had over 26 participants, we immediately planned to do a follow-up Rock Tree Symposium um, in the fall, which ended up being in November, so those cadets could continue on to earn all the requirements for the Model Rocketry Badge. But then after we did have the second one, um, which had 32 participants, we then realized that, you know, to keep it going, we had to do more than rocketry, of course. So we decided to expand to the other four STEM kits to keep the cadets interested. So the Aerospace STEM Academy was born, and the first... Um, Academy was this last weekend, and we had beginner and intermediate model rocketry. And um, this go around, we had we brought on the model and remote control aircraft or MARC um, track, where we had over um, 10 participants along with the rocketry. And then everybody actually got this um, do astronomy as well. And overall, we had um, 16 mo basic model rocketry, 14 intermediate rocketry. 10 mark and then 12 staff. So we had, when you added that on with the senior activity we had going on there, we had almost 70 people there. Um, big thing is these quarterly academies are meant to enhance not only the WINGS aerospace education program internally, but to supplement all the squadrons, local aerospace education curriculum, and also bolster their aerospace education excellence programs, since all of these projects we're doing are actually from the AEX programs. Can we expect to see more of these activities in the future? Um, yes, actually. The next um, Aerospace STEM Academy, or as we abbreviate ASA, is planned for May. And we'll have all of what I talked about before, in addition to the other two remaining STEM activities, which is flight simulator and robotics. And also the MARC will expand from beginner to intermediate to sort of carry on with those 10 cadets that did the basic before and we will continue to conduct these quarterly as long as there's interest in the wing. The big thing I want to emphasize, cadets throughout the wing participate so it's a great opportunity to network with the cadets from other groups of squadrons plus they get to stay in military barracks and eat their meals in a dining facility which Master Sergeant O'Neill who cooks for the encampments actually comes and cooks for us so that in itself is a bargain right there but the thing we want to also emphasize is that even though this is not an encampment, they do go live the military life of the weekend, and most of the cadets build camaraderie and long-lasting interpersonal and professional relationships with their other their um, peers. And this also seems to ease the tensions when they do attend an encampment. We've been without an active aerospace director for some time now. What are your plans to revitalize the program? Well, we're already off to a great start with the academy, of course, but the first order of business is to develop a robust aerospace education plan of action with realistic and attainable goals. And I'm also, I've already been working with secular homeschool groups with the ACE, or the Aerospace Connection and Educator Program for school-aged children, and the Aerospace Education Member Program for Educators to support our external AE program. And then internally, I'm looking forward to working with the group and squadron AEOs and assisting them in the professional development in their specialty ratings. I also hope to grow an AE staff to focus on the internal external programs. And beyond that, we're also planning a tour of Whiteman Air Force Base next month. And I also hope to develop a monthly newsletter to advertise events, programs, and opportunities. 
Um, another thing I wanted to add there was I've been that aerospace education officer grasping for at straws for finding ways and resources to have a viable AE program for my cadets and seniors. So I want to share my successes and warn of my failures to provide that lamplight so our squadron in Missouri Wing can have a successful aerospace education program while we meet our congressional mandate derived from Title 36 of the U.S. Code, um, which actually says to provide an organization to encourage and aid citizens of the United States in contributing their efforts, services, and resources in developing aviation and in maintaining air supremacy, and to provide aviation education and training, especially to our senior and cadet members. That's going to be my mantra. Thank you, Colonel Sander, for joining us today. We look forward to all you have to offer as the new director. Thank you. That's all for this episode of MoCap TV. As always, if you have a story that you would like to share, you can send it to mocaptv at mowg.cap.gov. Until next time, thanks for watching.